Hello and welcome to the Durham Talents channel. My name is Jesse Durham and this is going to be the first installment in a book review series that we're going to do on Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. So let's begin an introduction into what it means to become your own banker, what the infinite banking concept actually is about. It's how we accommodate for our need for finance. But he would say that you know, all he did was add scale to something that had already been done by Walt Disney or J.C. Penney or Pampered Chef or, you know, even even in the the popular movie. I enjoy it. My family enjoys it. It's a Wonderful Life. George Bailey tried to use a whole life insurance policy as leverage for financial purposes. So what he did was he added scale. Nash in his book Becoming Your Own Banker added scale. That would allow for a system of policies to eventually accommodate our entire need for finance, whether that's in a household or in a business or for an investor, whatever the case may be. So this this powerful entity of a dividend paying whole life insurance policy and how to use it, the thinking for how to use it is what is powerful is what added scale. Now, Nash would go on to say that his book was not a tool for agents. It was not supposed to be a marketing or a tool for agents, but rather Nash wrote the book and did his life seminars for the lay person, for the average person to be able to become their own banker. And he would continue by saying that, you know, the conventional approach of providing for a death benefit, there's great value there, obviously, okay? But our need for finance is so much greater than our need for protection. And what I found to be true, both as a consumer and as a professional myself, is that when we accommodate for our need for finance and having and owning a properly structured policy with a mutual company that pays a dividend, that we end up with more death benefit than we otherwise thought was going to even be possible. So we can do both. We can account for our need for protection, but by focusing on our need for finance, we'll accomplish both. Now, this method of becoming your own banker, it's the most simple thing. And in talking with clients and prospective clients and and having gone through the mental gymnastics of arriving at the possibility that I could become my own banker, I must say that it's the most simple thing. It's in the actual title. You can become your own banker. That is it. Now, sure, there are 92 pages with large print and big illustrations and such where Nash dives in on principles and philosophies and pragmatic information. And that's why we're doing this. This is this is this is not a replacement for what Nash has done. And, and in fact, his second book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. But it is a way for me to be able to say out loud and for me to be able to share, you know, information audibly that may help in accelerating your learning curve. So read Nash's book and his second book. Dive in on his written works. I have, and I continue to read and reread Nash's works because there are higher and higher levels of understanding and application. You know, he talks about the arrival, and I'm jumping ahead, but he talks about the arrival syndrome. I've not arrived. You know, I've, I've been buying multiple policies from multiple companies for several years now using those for things like paying off student loan debt, bad debt, financing vacations, business endeavors, all sorts of different things, becoming my own banker. Now, the crux of the problem that Nash addressed in the introduction to his Becoming Your Own Banker book was the amount, and is still, the amount of interest, the volume of interest that the average American is paying that represents money that will forever leave his home, forever leave his business, okay? 
we're paying approximately 35% of every dollar we earn in interest because we've abdicated the banking function. We're using other people's money. Or if we're paying cash for things, we're forfeiting the opportunity to earn on our money. So we're not accounting for the banking function. And that leads to this drastic problem of interest that forever leaves us never to return. And that, that that's addressed in Nash's works. Now, he goes on to specify that this is not about investments whatsoever of any kind. The entire concept of becoming your own banker has nothing to do with investments, although, and I say this often, when I'm talking about the infinite banking concept could be used for households, businesses, investors. Although, if we do account for our need for finance, if we do recognize that we could become our own banker, could we become our own banker also on our investing? Absolutely, to be sure. But they are separate. Infinite banking is not about investing. Owning a whole life policy is not about investing. That's not an investment. That is offsetting risk and insurable interest, offsetting risk on an insurable person for the concerned parties, i.e. the beneficiaries. So the policy that I first procured was for me. It was on my life because I have a wife and now two sons and a daughter that would greatly miss me in many different aspects, but specifically from a financial standpoint and a whole life policy that is permanently owned by our family is going to be the best way to have a tax-free transfer of wealth for my beneficiaries, for my heirs. So it's not about investments of any kind. It's about what we're financing and how to be the banker for what it is that we're already doing in a way that doesn't have us losing, lose any control or that has any additional risk that we assume. It doesn't even have to change our cash flows. But it's not about investing. Nor is it about rates of return. That's language that ties into the modern conventional sentiment of finance, personal finance, um, this is not about rates of return. Again, whole life insurance is a permanent way to offset risk and allow a tax-free transfer of wealth to beneficiaries with that policy, either when that policy matures or when the insured graduates. So what I would point out about rates of return is that when we recognize that there is a boom-bust cycle, or like the Bible says, there are seasons in life. Jim Rohn famously spoke about seasons. So it's hot, it's cold, it's dry, it's wet, spring, fall. When we recognize that rates can go up and go down, and I can't control that, you can't control that, the banking function takes place regardless always the banking function is taking place. My question is, who owns that? Who controls that? What if you could dictate the banking function in your life? And that's the crux of this idea. And that's what this introduction should be uh, laying out for us is the idea that you can become your own banker, that it doesn't have anything to do with being a tool for uh, agents, although agents can greatly benefit from recognizing just how life insurance, whole life insurance properly structured can be used for the banking purpose. It's not about rates of return. It's not about investments. So regardless of market volatility, the ups and the downs of interest, even inflation, accounting for the banking function will always, always improve one's situation. Because either, and again, always, I know I'm using the word a lot, always, either we are paying interest for money that we've borrowed from someone else or money that we've set aside that we otherwise could be using to earn 
we are forfeiting that. So either we're paying interest or we are losing the opportunity to earn on interest. Let's not even mention about us having a fiat currency right now. That is that is something worth noting too, though, that Nash would talk about how it's well known that banks earn more in a low interest environment. And in the day and time of this recording, when interest rates are extremely low, well, not zero, there's even talks of negative interest rates. It's worth noting that because of fractional reserve banking that banks are creating money out of thin air, charging interest for that. The consumer pays for that. So regardless whether interest is high or low in regards of rates of return, the banking function is taking place. And those that account for it, those that become their own banker, well, that puts us in charge of the terms, the conditions, but also it puts us in the position of ownership, wherein we can have the return of our principal, we can receive the interest that otherwise would have gone to someone else, and we can recapture all of that back into a system that we own and control, that we can grow and scale and grow and scale. Now, it's not get rich quickly. It's not get rich quickly. Nash said that this is the most profitable thing that you could choose to do over your lifetime. Emphasis on lifetime. I know it's it's very easy to, to zero in on most profitable thing that we could choose to do. And that is true. But it's not get rich quickly. You know, Nash would talk about it may take 7 years, 14 years, 20 years for the average person to get premiums to equal their income, to get all of the snakes and the dragons out of their life. And that just meant commercial banks and such, okay, to, to completely become your own banker in your household or in your business. Now, it may take you shorter or longer. I don't know. That's up to you. But it's not get rich quickly. It's something that you can choose to do over the course of your life. You could choose to capitalize your own system. You could choose to not abdicate the banking function and assume that again for yourself. So the the quote of, and he used this, the quote of planning to live forever, but acting as if you'll die today is very, very appropriate here. Very, very appropriate here. You know, as a husband and a father, I appreciate moments. More and more, I appreciate moments. But also that causes me to want to think and plan and act intergenerationally like Nash recommended. Also, thinking of my children's children and how I can leave an inheritance to my children's children and beyond. So it's the most profitable thing that we could choose to do over our lifetime, but it's not get rich quickly and nash would talk in his experience from his experience you know as a forester he was a forester by trade for years and he would have this 70 year mentality in planning how to plant property with trees do scheduled and appropriate you know, trimmings prunings and and and, and culling uh, to be able to get to uh, um, you know the best yield possible per acre and that that thinking that 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 long range thinking that he had learned and adopted as a forester he applied to his written work of becoming your own banker and i do believe that we would benefit by thinking long range as as nash encouraged us to now ultimately our wealth has to reside somewhere okay you probably, like me today, may have spent some money and earned some money. Spent and earned. So there's this natural law of motion. You know, our lungs breathe, blood circulates through our body, the tides come in and go out, the solar system is moving, revolutions are taking place, etc. I mean, a stagnant pond, all right, the opposite, think of the opposite, a stagnant pond, nothing's living there. Well, wealth must reside somewhere. So I understand that we earn and we spend. But again, if we remember that we finance everything and that wealth must reside somewhere, and that's how Nash got to the title of his second book, Building Your 
warehouse of wealth. Your money, your dollars must have a home. Sure, they'll be deployed somewhere and they'll be re you'll receive dollars somewhere. Where is that warehouse? Who owns it? Who controls it? These are questions for us to be able to answer. And for sure, this has to do with the introduction to the infinite banking concept. Wealth must reside somewhere. And when you recognize that you can become your own banker, it's only your imagination that will limit what you can do. You know, what you can conceive. Uh, I mean, it's the infinite banking concept. So it's a concept. So it has to do with our thinking, but it's an infinite banking concept. Whatever level we can. And that's why Nash would always say rethink your thinking. Okay. So he also encouraged us to be open to a new perspective on uh, quote unquote retirement. I've also read some great works from folks like Rabbi Daniel Lappin, who talks about never retire. I mean, that's the title in his book, Thou Shall Prosper, Never Retire. Um, you know, Zig Ziglar, I believe it was, pointed out how in the Bible, uh, you know, retirement, going backwards, retiring, was never a good thing. Uh, regardless, Nash did encourage us to rethink how we viewed, and he said that his, his view on the subject had completely changed. He recognized the need for a passive income, and that's, that's the way that his thinking had, had turned was towards having a passive income. So let's, let's walk through this since this is an introduction to the infant banking concept. When you arrive at wanting to become your own banker and you obtain a whole life insurance policy with a mutual company that pays a dividend that's been properly structured, it should be able to accommodate immediately. I mean, that year, immediately. Some goal, some part of your financial footprint. It should be able to accommodate for something for you beginning to become your own banker. Now, one policy uh, accommodating all of you know anybody's need for finance, I believe that's a stretch. But for sure, it starts you on that process to become your own banker, both in your thinking but in actuality. Being able to access the capital in a policy that you own and control for the things here now, but also as we are thinking long range and we recognize that, sure, we finance cars and homes and weddings and uh, engagement rings and uh, vacations and whatever it is that we're already doing, business equipment, etc. It's the infinite banking concept. Again, doesn't matter what the, 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 the subject matter is there, what we're using uh, as an example. But when we recognize that, yes, there may come a time where 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, whatever... Um, that we would benefit from having passive income. Well, when we recognize that the cash value and the death benefit, because they relate to each other, have a continual and a perpetual growth until the maturation of that policy on weekends, holidays, when the markets close, etc., day after day. Today, my cash values and my policies is greater than it was yesterday, and tomorrow it will be greater than it is today. When we recognize that, that continual guaranteed upward growth trend is taking place, and we can pay a dollar in premium today, that will equal a multiple eventually in the future, then... You know, it's a question at that point probably of, you know, do we want big numbers or small numbers? You know, if we could uh, pay a dollar in premium today and get a multiple of that into the future, you know, how many of those do we want? So hopefully it will give us, as we continue to, to read Nelson's work, as we continue to cover in this series on uh, Nash's work, this book review series, as we continue to cover Becoming Your Own Banker, Hopefully we'll gain some new insights on passive income and retirement. And let me say, this entire concept that you can become your own banker, for sure it is a paradigm shift. I don't care if you have to look that word up. I'm not trying to be condescending or patronizing. There was a time when I didn't know what the word paradigm meant. And what I can also say is from experience too, as I bought policies, paid premiums, 
made policy loans, read and reread Nash's work, had discussions with my wife as we used our policies. More was caught on by us. You know, we we had there wasn't there wasn't a, just a only a single light bulb moment for us. You know, this paradigm shift has had moments of impact for us. So it's the ultimate in simplicity, Nash would say. It's becoming your own banker. It's you becoming your own banker. But for sure, it is a paradigm shift as well. So I encourage you to read and reread Nash's work with an open mind. And remember what Will Rogers would say. He would say, the problem isn't what we don't know in America. It's what we think we know that just ain't so. So, I hope that this has been helpful. This has absolutely been a pleasure for me. If you'd like to have a conversation about how you could apply the infinite banking concept into your household or your business or your investing, I'd love to be able to hear from you. You can call me at 828-817-4223 or you can reach us durhamtalents at gmail.com. This has been a great pleasure for me. I look forward to our next conversation. Have a great day. Take care. More is, and that's something else that Nash would say. Okay, more is caught than taught. We can we can run with that because we can. Got lost. My train of thought there.